I've got a shape for you, Brady. If you've got a shape, you want to start putting it together. So I've got just, these are copies of the same shape. And I'm allowing myself to flip them over. But that's quite nice. I have covered the boundary of my original shape with copies of the same. So we might ask, well, can I do that again? Keeping going with the shape, if I had enough of these pieces, I could sort of, now I can put some things round and maybe I can, I, I can sort of get myself into trouble. I can get stuck. So, but maybe if I work hard enough, I could put another loop round and maybe another one. Maybe I could go on forever, maybe not. This tile was discovered by someone called Casey Mann. He actually started knowing that this is a tile where you cannot go on forever. And the way we describe that is this is an unbalanced tile. So if you look at it, there's one part of this tile, this piece here where you've got an arc of a circle, where I can fit something on and it can sort of, but I can only fit the pieces of the tile that curve in onto the piece that curves out. Now all these arcs are sort of in multiples of a sixth of a circle. And so if I sort of look round this, this shape, here I've got the, the positive piece, the, the convex piece, and that has four. And then here I have concave, and that's actually two there. I have one there. Here we have three. And here we have one. So if you notice the negatives, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the positives are only four. And so as I keep on going, the amount of negative relative to positive is going to grow and grow and grow. And at some point, it's going to overwhelm things. This is a tile we're going to have to stop at some point. And the time where we stop, uh, the number of rings we can do is something called the Heesh number. So what's the Heesh number for that shape? So the Heesh number for this shape is, is three. And here is something where we can show those rings. And so no matter how hard you try, you can't go further than that with this particular type. We can ask, well, what other numbers can be Heesh numbers? What about a circle? What's the Heesh number of a circle? So when you surround it, it has to also be touched at every edge. Yeah. To... Right. You really need to surround it possibly. So the circle, I've just written its Heesh number. It's zero. Right, yeah. Another simple example is the square. You could do that forever. Yeah, so the Heesh number is infinity. This shape here lies somewhere between the circle with zero and the square with infinity. And obviously, complete rings, they have to be whole numbers. There's a fairly old example which looks like this. And this is an early example, and it has heesh number one. So that means I can cover the boundary of this tile completely with copies of this tile once. But then I can't go any further. We can have examples where you can do two rings, three rings, like the example we started with, and four rings. You can even get up to doing five whole rings, and you can see this shape does it. And you're seeing how this could be quite a complex operation here. This is not the natural way necessarily you might feel, the obvious way. You can get yourself into trouble in all sorts of, of, of places as you put things on. And in fact, this tile with Heesh number five, also discovered by Casey Mann, is the world record holder. And just to give you a sense, this is not an old problem because even Heesh number two was only found in 1991. The conjecture is all Heesh numbers, all whole numbers are the Heesh number for some tile. That's what we believe. Yet we only know examples up to five. So if I said 4,622, there could be a shape out there that will do it and then stop. Yeah, we believe that would be the case. This is linked to some other tiling problems, but we sort of have no idea how you'd even start to, 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 to prove that or find, find examples. How does a problem like this progress? This isn't like the Riemann hypothesis is it, where everyone wants to solve it. Um, this is, yeah, this is a problem which now has a little bit of a, a knowledge about it. So if you, were to, if you were to make significant progress on it, then people would look up and, and, and take note. Although significant progress is probably something a bit more than saying, oh, I've just found a tile with Heesh number six. 
Um, and so both of the two examples from, from Casey Mann, um, this example with, with Heesh number three and the one with Heesh number five, they are both part of a sort of more general study that he did looking at what you could do with polyhexes where you stick together hexagons and then make some markings on the side. It might be that you could get some rich structure from that. You, know, you could then get a result where you say, I can do every even number up to 50. And then that might be a, might, might be a more interesting uh, result. The other thing it's related to is a problem called the Einstein problem. Einstein as in one tile. And that asks if there is a single tile, Einstein in German, so it's a bad pun, which will tile the plane, but not periodically. So all the infinite tilings we know so far are periodic? No, we have things like the Penrose tiling, but that has two different shapes. So you take your shape, you put it together in all possible ways, and you can cover the whole plane, but then none of them which are like the squares, the tiling of squares, which I can just pick up shift and put down and it's the same everywhere when I do that. So the, with the Einstein problem you, you would find a single tile that can create tilings of the plane but not periodically. You're asking for tilings that will only produce non-periodic tilings. There is a slight cheat with the Einstein problem. Joan Taylor from Tasmania did her math degree and then raised a family but always had an interest in mathematics and spent in particular this problem and so about 10 years ago now she found a single tile that has this property. The only problem is that it's not a connected tile. I can draw some path. We might say, you know, this is a connected object. I can, if I'm somewhere on this island, I can get anywhere else. But imagine if I say, well, my island is officially going to be this piece and this piece. Now I can only move them around together. I can't move them freely. They, you know, they stay in the same places, so that's a single shape, but with two pieces. And so she found a particular shape that has this property, you can see it there, and this will only tile non-periodically, but you know, it's a slight cheat. It, it's, it's a really nice result because this was a problem that was like 50 or 60 years old. I think often in mathematics, when you can't solve a problem for long enough, even a solution that's a little bit of a cheat can be a, a useful information. And it's a very valid cheat, if that makes sense, because you, you do have one shape that you can move around together. It's just the way it's defined. I couldn't laser cut it, which is why, why I'm not so keen. Dead Mountain is a gripping account of the so-called Dyatlov Pass incident. This is a true story from 1959 when nine young hikers who were pretty experienced, mysteriously died in the Ural Mountains here in the Soviet Union. Now, I don't want to give too much away, but it's one of the great mysteries, and it's still a very famous tale in Russia. And it's the most recent book I've listened to on Audible. I really recommend it. It's fascinating, well told, and it's read by the author Donny Iker in a kind of dry but really engrossing way. Audible are the sponsor of today's video, and they've got an unmatched range of books. I personally really like mountaineering ones, but there's always something you'll find to your taste. Joining Audible means every month you get one credit and you can use it on an audiobook plus two Audible originals from a changing selection of shows that you can't get anywhere else. And if you ever download a book that, say, you don't like, you can exchange it, no charge, no questions asked. That's a really great deal and it's really easy to do. To get your first audiobook with a free 30-day trial, visit audible.com slash number file or text number file to 500 500. There are the details on the screen, audible.com slash number file or that SMS, the word number file to 500 500. And my recommendation to get you started, this one here, Dead Mountain. Really top story, really great audiobook.